Okay, good evening. It's 5.30 and we'll go ahead and call the San Bruno City Council special meeting of August 24th, 2021 to order. And if the uh, city clerk, if you could be so kind as to take roll. Councilmember Hamilton? Here. Councilmember Mason? Here. Vice Mayor Salazar? I'm sorry, Councilmember Salazar? Here. Old habits. Vice Mayor Marty Medina? Here. Mayor Rico Medina? Here. Now we'll move on to item number three, public comments for items not on the agenda. Uh, we do have a study session this evening uh, on strategic initiative and a discussion of potential downtown ad hoc committee. If it's not related to that and you wish to speak, this would be the time to please raise your hand and we will go ahead and call on you. Seeing no hands. We'll go ahead and move on to item four, which is a study session, strategic initiative update and discussion of potential downtown ad hoc committee. First, we'll go ahead and start off with the strategic initiative update, and uh, we'll turn that over to the city manager. Good afternoon, Mayor, uh, members of the City Council, and uh, members of watching at home. Javon Grogan, City Manager. Uh, I'm here to kick off our presentation of the strategic initiative updates. I'll begin from here, uh, then I'll sit back down uh, as we go through uh, details and answer questions. Just a quick overview. Uh, the objective is to provide the City Council with an update on funded and unfunded strategic initiatives. Uh, this is really high level update. Uh, these new initiatives were adopted for the fiscal year beginning July 1, uh, and we did commit to give quarterly updates. But what I wanted to do is early on, um, because not everything was able to be funded in the budget, come back to the city council and give you a very brief high level update and let you know uh, what we're working on. In addition, as the mayor mentioned, uh, council member Medina, requested and the city council uh, supported a discussion with regard to the establishment of a potential downtown ad hoc committee. Uh, and you guys all received a PowerPoint from council member Medina. Uh, and so following the strategic initiatives discussion, uh, uh, I believe the mayor uh, will turn the meeting over to council member Medina who will then give that presentation. I said this already, quarterly updates. Uh, I know the city council knows this, but as a reminder, uh, we will be providing four uh, quarterly updates uh, for each quarter of the fiscal year. Uh, at this point, we are roughly, uh, or a little bit over halfway through the first quarter, uh, and then the second quarter begins in October, uh, so on and so forth. Wanted to begin, uh, again, I know the city council knows this, but for members of the public that uh, may be watching, uh, priority focus areas and strategic initiatives, just a little ground setting. Priority, priority focus areas are areas that the city council uh, adopts during the annual budget uh, process for both operating and capital. Uh, they do change over time uh, and they are intended to uh, be fluid in nature, uh, but reflect the city council's primary areas that they would like uh, concentration on. Strategic initiatives uh, underpin the priority focus areas. Um, they are, uh, this is an important note, typically in addition to the regular work effort for city operations uh, and capital improvement projects. And the city council uh, furthered that this year uh, because we took out all of the capital improvement projects and initiatives that were related to the regular workload of staff and, and council really wanted all the strategic initiatives to focus, uh, really uh, underpin those focus areas, but be those high level important uh, initiatives for the organization. Priority focus areas are here, uh, implement uh, the train the corridor vision and revitalize downtown in our all important commercial corridor, uh, assure rehabilitation and replacement of critical infrastructure and facilities, grow city revenues to assure ongoing fiscal sustainability and economic vitality, continue to strengthen community connections, engagement and communication, protect and improve community aesthetics and safety, and continue proactive planning for the future of our great city. Uh, it's important to note that these are not in priority uh, order, um, but they are the priority areas of focus. 
So uh, your strategic initiatives for fiscal year 21-22, there are 42 individual initiatives. Uh, at this point, we have completed three in just a short amount of time. Um, most of those are, are, I believe all of those were sort of things that were in progress, but not yet done at the end of the last fiscal year. 19 are active projects, 12 are anticipated to start later this fiscal year, uh, and eight are unlikely to start this fiscal year. And, and council will remember that uh, some of the conversations we had around the strategic initiatives is that it was very appropriately uh, setting a high bar, uh, but a bar that uh, I think we all recognize that the city does not have the bandwidth and the resources to begin all of them, and a number of them are, are unfunded. So at a high level, uh, I have a few slides that will go over the completed strategic initiatives, and then uh, I'd like to walk through that matrix that you have uh, one by one and, and give just a brief highlight. But the three completed strategic initiatives were our traffic calming measures and speed bump repaving. We'll talk more about that. It was really taking a holistic look at how that process works. Um, uh, execution of our cost allocation plan and user fees, those take effect uh, in just a few days in September 1. That was a, a, a really big project. Uh, and personnel board transition. Of those 19 that are ongoing, they're listed here, uh, in, are active uh, installation of downtown parking meters, the Canon One upgrade, the funded project, uh, citywide parking programs, Crestmore wildfire mitigation, um, uh, a citywide wildfire mitigation, clean San Bruno, uh, Bay Hill specific plan, downtown parking strategies, uh, implement online permitting, communications plan, council uh, policies and procedures manual, district elections, trash receptacles, Centennial Park, community fiber upgrade, grant writing, shared services, uh, cannabis regulation, short-term rental, uh, and stormwater. Of those that are anticipated to start later in this fiscal year, um, installation of the uh, downtown parking meters, actually that was an active project, that must be a, a holdover. Uh, the, the, the channel, channel, uh, channel one upgrade, citywide parking program, why is this? I'm sorry, that I didn't change. Anticipated to start later this fiscal year, a uh, newspaper rack, water rate study, sewer rate study, the east-west street sweeping alignment, uh, adoption of an affordable housing fund implementation plan, uh, looking at affordable housing uh, projects throughout the city in partnership with uh, the development community, installation of temporary loading zones, uh, economic development program, Climate Action Plan, Heart Committee, TSPC Review, and Charter City with a focus on the real estate transfer tax. The initiatives unlikely to start this year is our downtown uh, greening and landscaping plan, wayfinding signage, uh, the summer and Saturday uh, street closures potentially for downtown, small business attraction program, culture and arts committee review, citywide metrics, Posey Park improvement, and adopt a drain. I know Council Member Medina uh, will get up and uh, provide the presentation and there'll be a council discussion about a potential downtown ad hoc committee. Uh, as we were going through the strategic initiatives uh, and looking at them, it was clear that a number of them actually relate to, to downtown. Uh, 20 of the 42 uh, are actually related to downtown, either directly or indirectly. And so I wanted to call those out. It's installation of parking meters, wayfinding signage, uh, the short-term parking uh, strategies for downtown, the temporary loading zones, trash receptacles, newspaper racks, the downtown greening and landscaping plan, uh, Posey Park, Centennial Park, cannabis regulations. Uh, I know a number of council members have talked about potentially having cannabis uh, retailers in the downtown, certainly the street closures downtown, the east-west sweeping uh, issue, while not solely related to downtown, certainly downtown is on the east side, uh, citywide parking programs, um, certainly uh, effective in the downtown area. Cleaning San Bruno, again, indirectly related. Uh, affordable housing, we've talked about having uh, housing in the transit quarters plan downtown. Uh, and same thing with the, with the partnerships with, with developers. Certainly economic development and that new position that the city council approved uh, related to downtown. Small business attraction related to downtown. District elections I put there. Uh, because uh, should the city council proceed with districts, there will certainly be a district that encompasses downtown, so potentially a greater focus there. And then cultural and arts committee review, um, uh, 
we've talked a lot about having more culture uh, and arts and, and murals and things downtown. So again, I just wanted to highlight for council uh, that a number of your initiatives, nearly half are on some way related to downtown. So that concludes uh, the PowerPoint presentation. I do wanna sit down uh, and pull up that, uh, the, the matrix that we provided to you. So, so council can see the matrix. Um, this is in order, uh, not as, uh, as I presented in the PowerPoint active, uh, likely to start, unlikely to start, this is in order of your priority areas of focus. And so uh, just want to want to highlight a few of them uh, that I know Council uh, has been interested in. Installation of parking meters. This project is linked with wayfinding signage funded at 225,000. It's important to note that that is seed funding. Uh, as we investigate parking meters, uh, the installation uh, and, and cost to operate them uh, may, or cost to implement them may increase. There are various models that we're looking into. There's the purchase model, there's the lease model, there's the lease to purchase model. Uh, it has varying impl implementation costs, but that analysis is, is underway. With regard to wayfinding signage, uh, that this is on hold pending personnel and consultant resources, but also important aligning to initiative 1.1 for consistent parking signage throughout the downtown. So as we put together our parking plan for both on street and off street, having the wayfinding signage linked to that uh, in a complimentary way. Downtown trash receptacles, uh, council has talked uh, a lot about this and uh, wanted to just highlight that that is an active project. The standard receptacles have been ordered. They're expected to be delivered in September. Uh, staff will uh, intends and would like to do the uh, and installed by city staff. And so when they arrive, we will do an assessment of that and begin to roll out implementation. The newspaper uh, rack project uh, was initiated, but has been temporarily put on hold. And we do intend to reactivate that in QT. That is strictly a staffing uh, resource issue with not having enough personnel uh, to move all these projects forward. As you'll see, uh, the downtown greening plan, a high uh, important interest of council just highlighting that uh, in a few weeks, we will be at the Citizens Revenue Oversight Committee uh, for a rearticulation uh, of that funding request from Measure G as requested by the City Council. Colby Park, uh, the uh, Council is aware that we have applied for a Measure K grant, but there's an unfunded portion there. Centennial uh, uh, Park Improvements, a uh, very important project in our downtown. Uh, we have hired a landscape architect. They are uh, currently designing a, a park. We have expanded the boundaries of uh, the improvements to include the walkway that's adjacent. So we don't make a beautiful uh, plaza, but, but leave a, a unimproved walkway. Uh, and so when those designs come in, uh, there is a plan to uh, provide those both to the Park and Rec Commission and to the City Council. Uh, with construction uh, starting in early uh, no November, 60 days to completion, which means that we at this point are targeting completion by January 2022. And so no longer able to have those done uh, in time for the, for the holiday season uh, this year, uh, but very much still moving forward with that project. Traffic calming, this was a completed one. I'll just note that uh, here uh, for this item, there were revisions to the traffic calming toolkit uh, that went to, to the TSPC committee in September of 2020. Uh, and additional work related to this topic will, will really occur uh, with regard to strategic initiative 26.5, which the city council wanted to undertake as a part of strong governance, a review of the uh, TSPC committee. Uh, also important to note that there was a recent committee meeting where five zones uh, or five areas in the city went through an analysis uh, for um, um, traffic calming measures. One was approved. Uh, the other four zones did not meet the thresholds, but important to know that the process is working. Uh, adopt a drain is on hold pending staff resources. Uh, we are on track, as we mentioned before, to release the grant uh, for um, uh, grant writing assistance. 
With regard to comprehensive fiscal sustainability, uh, the city council, uh, I know, is aware of all of the work that we've done with regard to fiscal sustainability. The items that are listed here are simply those um, high level items that we will be working on in uh, this fiscal year. Uh, the council has directed that we look at a uh, city, city charter focused on the commercial transfer tax. Um, this is anticipated to begin later this fiscal year. There have been a number of internal uh, staff meetings on this already. The effort is currently unfunded. Um, however, depending on the direction, uh, we may be able to do that with existing staff resources. However, there will be questions that we will pose to the city council, such as do we want to undertake a likely voter poll uh, that will have to be funded, uh, but it uh, could very well inform the tax structure that we put, uh, that the council may decide to put on the ballot. Uh, Short-term rentals, uh, the city council, and, and so with regard to, I'm sorry, the charter, uh, we, we will be scheduling a study session with the city council either late in Q1 or early in Q2 uh, to talk about those decisional items that need to be made in advance of major work beginning on this project. With regard to short-term rentals, uh, we are in discussions with HDL. Uh, you'll know HDL is our um, sales tax and property tax consultant and the company that we recently hired for administration of our uh, business license tax. They also do short-term rental implementation, so we, we are engaged in discussions with them to take on a third-party administration of uh, the city's short-term rental uh, transient occupancy tax. Uh, cannabis regulations, uh, this is an active project. It is budgeted for $40,000. Uh, staff is evaluating uh, a zoning ordinance amendment change uh, that could begin later this fiscal year. It will require one meeting of the Planning Commission and three meetings of the City Council. There are a whole host of decisions that are needed uh, by the City Council. Uh, how many dispensaries uh, uh, should the city allow and which zoning districts uh, should those dis dispensaries be allowed? Should we conduct a poll uh, of business owners and property owners in those specific zoning districts prior to any decisions? Um, and what public outreach, uh, additional public outreach efforts should we undertake? Uh, a lot of um, uh, important threshold questions, and we will be scheduling a study session uh, in Q2 uh, to, to bring those items before council and have that robust discussion. Stormwater, we've talked about, uh, but, but again, that decision on the next step is set for October. Cost allocation plan done. Uh, water rate study and sewer rate study, I won't spend much time on, anticipated to begin later, but uh, should we uh, do this effort, which staff agrees that we, that we should, um, we need to uh, realign existing personnel uh, resources and or bring on consultant support to get this work done. Uh, Channel One upgrades, a funded project uh, that is moving forward. I, I won't say more about that. Uh, the idea of having summer and Saturday street closures in downtown is on hold pending identification of existing staff resources to manage and oversee downtown events. We do not have the capacity or the personnel to implement this at this time, uh, and the effort is unfunded, and so that, that project is on hold. Um, the east-west street sweeping alignment uh, anticipated to start in Q3, uh, uh, certainly a high level um, uh, and important effort. It's unfunded. I, I think it's important to note there that uh, until the analysis is done, and we intend to do the analysis in-house, we will not know the full complement of costs uh, to undertake that effort. Uh, certainly, it will increase uh, our, our enforcement efforts and our street sweeping program. Uh, that will come at a cost. There may be some offset from uh, in the initial years from revenue from citations, but we know that um, patterns change when citations are given, and so keeping up those enforcement habits uh, will be important. Citywide parking programs, the, this is being led by the police department. There is an uh, effort underway to begin investigating uh, strategies to enhance parking enforcement uh, across the city uh, and in our, especially in our commercial Districts, um, this will be linked to uh, Initiative 1.1, which is the downtown parking meter uh, program for the enforcement of uh, both on-street and off-street parking in the commercial areas. Uh, and how we staff to do that really relates to how we 
increased parking enforcement citywide. Wildfire risk mitigation in Crestmore Canyon. I, I know council is well aware uh, of this project. Uh, I believe that the conserv California Conservation Corps uh, will resume uh, their spikes to do wildfire mitigation in the next few months. In addition, there's that larger uh, project to do uh, mitigation throughout the canyon proper. Right now, we are centering, centering on that 100 foot dispensable space clearing from all the structures at the top of the canyon. But as a part of that uh, $3 million project, three plus million dollar project, uh, there is uh, wildfire mitigation and uh, also a plan to uh, bring water uh, to the, the, the existing service road that is in the canyon. So, should there be a wildfire there, uh, we will have a very easy water access. And so that all of that requires a CEQA, California Environmental Quality Act work. Uh, and so we have retained a consultant and we'll begin working on that. The citywide wildfire mitigation project, um, well underway. Uh, what's actually not here is the work that staff uh, undertook last fiscal year and this fiscal year in working with Caltrans for the wildfire mitigation work that's currently uh, occurring in, in two phases. One phase uh, concluded a few months ago, another phase is active now, uh, and they're clearing um, eucalyptus trees along the, the 280 off ramp uh, near the canyon uh, by San Bruno Avenue. In addition, this project uh, it is, includes funding for a new uh, inspector position that we are recruiting for. Uh, and wildfire mitigation um, across various city owned properties uh, that uh, will, is funded at, at $150,000 a year, but, but we'll, we'll, we'll need to increase. Uh, our initial focus area is Crystal Springs Road. Uh, it's important to note that the um, brush and trees uh, are, uh, have uh, encroached on the roadway. Uh, and currently, the fire trucks have to drive down um, close to the center lane. Uh, due to the encroachment, uh, and so not just the fire risk, but the public safety risk has elevated a clearing project for Crystal Springs Road uh, to the top. Cleaning San Bruno won't spend a ton of time on this, but the council, because the council recently uh, um, uh, received an update on where we are with uh, Recology and uh, their pilot program for the abandoned waste uh, program that, that we launched. Um, there are additional efforts uh, related to this effort, such as the uh, Initiative 16 street sweeping, uh, downtown cleaning that may be related to the parking program. One of the things that we uh, have talked about internally is uh, should we um, move forward with parking meters down in downtown once we have a revenue projection? Will that revenue sustain increased cleaning downtown or potentially? a downtown ambassadors program and so that could be linked with this initiative as well uh, and also of course the, the trash receptacle project initiative 3.1 is linked to this initiative as well affordable housing uh, 16 and 17 uh, both are anticipated to begin later this fiscal year i think the biggest note about affordable housing uh, is really actually uh, number 19 uh, and should the uh, city council approve the Bay Hill specific plan and the U2 uh, phase one project, uh, there is approximately $25 million uh, that will be paid over the life uh, of that uh, development agreement uh, to our city's affordable housing uh, fund, which will give us the resources that uh, we very much need to, to build uh, or incentivize affordable housing. And there is a, a payment that should the uh, plan be approved and YouTube follows through on their development where we would receive approximately $9 million in 2022. Uh, and so all of these efforts sort of 17, 18 and 19 interrelate because to really uh, have a, a, a city project, uh, we need more than the balance that we have on our current fund, which is $3 million. Uh, track it. Um, this project uh, is moving forward. Um, we, we are looking uh, at evaluating several vendors, um, but uh, we have a goal of implementing in Q2. There has been a delay. Uh, we are actually shifting from e uh to a new vendor uh, due to uh, technical difficulties and integration, uh, but we are looking to, to initiate the launch of that in Q2. Economic Development Program, uh, 
20 and uh, 20 and 21.1. Uh, there's a new position that was funded in the budget. We are uh, recruiting for that uh, uh, position. I think actually we're beginning the recruitment plan for that position. It will go out on the street uh, later in uh, Q1. And the small business attraction program will really be linked to uh, that economic development officer, uh, economic development manager position. And so uh, when that position comes on board, if we can actually fill that position sooner rather than later, uh, this initiative may move from a two to a three. Climate action plan, uh, we did receive a $10,000 grant from PCE uh, specific to reach those. Um, initial work um, has begun on this. However, it is on, on hold pending additional resources, staffing and consultant, uh, as well as uh, financial resources, uh, staff, I uh, did begin conversations with faculty at Skyline College for research and fellowship assistance. Um, and those conversations will be reactivated uh, now that uh, uh, that personnel at Skyline is, uh, will be back on campus. Communications plan on track to provide that uh, to council by the end of Q1. Council policies and procedures uh, looking to uh, finalize that uh, in September, we pending calendaring a, a final study session or two uh, and final action by the city council at our regular meeting. Uh, we did run into a delay on that, but we are reactivating that. Personnel uh, board transition is complete. District elections, so we have uh, launched that project internally and we are planning a study session for the city council on September 28th. Uh, all of that work needs to be done by April uh, 2021, and so we're, we're working on the schedule, and there are a number of um, decisions that will be placed before the City Council at that September 28th meeting. Uh, HART Committee, uh, we anticipate beginning that in Q2. Uh, TSBC, uh, awaiting uh, the um, hiring of a permanent public works director uh, who will take on this initiative, uh, anticipated to start in Q3 or Q4. Uh, and cultural arts committee review uh, is unlikely to start this fiscal year. It's pending identification of staff resources. We have um, what I think is the best person on staff to lead this. Uh, their plate is currently full, uh, but uh, if we can offload some work there, uh, we may be able to start. Uh, but that has larger uh, decisional uh, um, staffing uh, decisions that uh, are before staff and the city council. And then citywide metrics, an important project, but on hold pending identification of staff or consultant resources. I did mention to the city council that um, we do not have the, the bandwidth to complete this project in, in large measure this year. We did um, begin by providing a report on the police department that provided a number of metrics, but a full comprehensive citywide performance metric project uh, is not within our current bandwidth to, to provide this year. However, uh, we will uh, look at potentially uh, bringing on a consultant to do that work, uh, but that will come at a cost and um, more on that uh, as we uh, proceed through the quarterly updates. And again, this was intended to be just a high level update. Uh, I, I noticed a number of our department heads are here um, and uh, happy to answer any questions that the city council has. But again, we will be providing quarterly updates and more detailed updates in the future. Thank you. Councilmember Hamilton. Uh, thank you, City Manager, for the, the detailed report. I just have a, a couple of, of questions, um, high level, not getting down in the weeds. Um, regarding the wayfinding signage, I'm, um, why is the that entire program um, contingent on the parking meter program? Could we um, could we adopt? Sorry, hang on. I don't know why my phone is ringing. My computer started ringing. Sorry about that. Um, could we adopt a design standard and develop signs to direct visitors visitors toward our downtown from other areas of the city, and then within downtown point fix people to city lots, and then use that same design standard later to add more signs related to parking to parking meters? City manager. Sure. Is that possible to do? Absolutely. 
Do we have the staff resources to do that right now? No. Uh, we do have a contract um, traffic engineer that we can apply uh, to that work. One of the challenges with that is just cost. Uh, that, that contract engineer actually costs more than a city staffer would, would cost. And so we're looking to bring a, a permanent traffic engineer on board and have had uh, a number of uh, ongoing recruitment efforts there. Uh, one of the reason why uh, staff is recommending linking it to the parking meter project is to understand where we're going with on street and off street parking and have a signage program that may actually drive people to the lots, right? Um, and, and, and have words on those signs that um, will let people know that, for example, uh, off street parking. Uh, is uh, lower lower than on than on street parking. So save money park park in this parking lot. Where that parking lot down down on that end is a two or five hour zone. And so to have a sort of very aesthetically pleasing, um, thoughtful approach to manic parking downtown, linking to a financial strategy uh, with regard to how you price on street and off street parking meters. Is there the possibility there, there are standard parking signs that are sort of white with green lettering saying parking over there, right? Can we implement those? That is possible. Uh, it, would, it would take some staff work to identify where, where those go. Um, but the recommendation was to do a holistic approach that is linked with uh, a comprehensive parking plan for for downtown. Okay, and that and that makes sense. And I'm not advocating, you know, getting generic generic signs or anything like that. I think what you described makes a lot of sense. So thank you. Um, and then my my uh, my other question um, under the clean San Bruno topic, you mentioned that um, it, it said in the in the uh, the matrix there that public education and information was underway. Are these are these un, by underway? Do you mean that those communications are still being developed, or has any of those communications gone out? There have been uh, communications around SB response, and that is how we're communicating to the public around illegal dumping. You see something reported to SB response. Uh, and so we, we have done communications around that, both in social media, newsletters, and, and print. Uh, and we will continue to do that uh, to um, increase awareness and, and use of SB response. Okay, thank you. I, I, I wasn't sure because I wasn't sure if I had seen any of them, but you know, with the way social media works, you don't always get to see everything. Um, you know, I, I, I know that I would be willing and my, some, of the, some, if not all of my colleagues would probably be willing to amplify those communications when they go out. So if there's a way to keep us in, in the loop when those things go out so we can look for them and, and amplify them, um, I'm sure we'd be happy to do that. And I know I would be. Thank you. Vice Mayor Medina. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, City Manager Grogan, for this um, update. Clearly, there's, there's, we don't have enough time to get into it, and and I understand it's just to give us an update. Um, I just had a couple quick questions um, on the Centennial Plaza one hundred fifty thousand dollar budget. Does that budget still include, um, or does it? include the design and construction costs? It does include the design and construction costs. It is our intention to do the project uh, with the budget that is provided. Caveat, since that time, I've had a number of communications from uh, members of the city council and others saying, can we add this, can we add this, can we do that? And so one of the things that we're doing is developing a design um, that will meet that that target, and want to bring that to the Park and Rec Commission. Want to bring that to uh, the, the City Council. Um, but I know that there's a lot of desires on sort of what that plaza looks like. The honest answer is 120,000 doesn't get um, a lot of the, the articulations that we've heard. And so we're working within that budget, absolutely. Uh, and we increased that budget the last time we were um, uh, before the city council because there were additional desires. And so we, we, we intend to live within that budget. 
Okay. Um, where in the recruitment process are we with the economic development director? So a recruitment plan has been developed. Uh, a number of those positions, including that one, was not funded for the full year. There was a recognition that um, I believe we did a four month recruitment cycle for a number of those positions. And so we're developing the recruitment plan for the economic development manager. Uh, and the plan for that is to launch in this quarter, which would mean between now and the end of September. Okay. Um, Councilman Hamilton um, asked the question on the wayfinding signage. So I, I, I see that. Um, and perhaps at a later time, not tonight, we, we can get into when we get the update, the official update, then we can um, have opportunities to, to ask additional questions. We don't have time tonight and we we just received this spreadsheet you know today so there was no way to, to be prepared to 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 get into it i i with that said clearly there's too much to do and um when we left this process um it was my intent or requests that we would prioritize. And I believe we still need to do that. And so perhaps when we do have the official update, um, that we'll be able to, to do that better. Um, so I'll, I'll, leave, I'll leave my comments for now. Councilmember Mason. Uh, so I think given that when, one area that wasn't mentioned around the importance of our downtown was that in the uh, San Bruno Community Foundation's recent um, survey, it was by far considered the number one area that residents are concerned and excited about altogether. So uh, I think um, what would help me to really understand where the city is prioritizing as far as operations go is we have a number of departments and it seems like uh, various departments might be able to focus on these different areas. So, you know, public works uh, is around the cleanliness, the police, code enforcement, community development around the greening um, to identify a priority area for each department and then identify timelines for actual execution. Um, because my concern is that the the conversation around the overwhelming numbers that we're seeing tonight um i don't think should be enough to not uh, not have a timeline for really anything right because some of these i think low-hanging fruit can be done as you're working on the trash receptacles you're working on um the um there was one other area that i had just written down a minute ago but I, I don't know that those two areas for the amount of time that are being placed on the presentations and the conversations, I think from all council members with um, our city manager, you know, shouldn't or couldn't be substituted with um, even picking one and saying, let's see what we can, if we can accomplish this in, in two or three months by having everybody work as a strategic initiative within the department um, on this area. And I do understand that departments have to work together. You know, not anything is one, but maybe having each department champion one area, because um, I just get concerned that the overwhelmingness is going to be used to um, to kind of offset the responsibility that we all have to our community to improve our downtown. Anything else, council member? No, I would like a response though from the city manager. I think the question is, would it be possible for the departments to kind of take an initiative on, on their own? They would, they get to pick the initiative based on, you know, their, their whatever they have on their plates um, and champion it. I, I just like to see some movement given the amount of attention that our downtown has right now. The city manager, are you, prepared or have any comments? Sure. So 
I think there's a lot there, but if we unpack it, what I would say is your departments are absolutely championing initiatives and working on them. Uh, and I think the progress that we saw from, at least I can speak on the 2019 and 2020 completed initiatives are, is that things are getting done. It is absolutely true that there are 42 initiatives within the city council did prioritize them in a bold sort of your, your one, two and three priority. Uh, what's also true is that the various pro projects move at different schedules and a different cadence because they're all unique and one person in one department will be working on this. This project will be across the park on a project. There, some are complex, some are not, some, some are not complex. Um, so I think it's fair to say that when the city council adopted these, pro, uh, these strategic initiatives, uh, one of the conversations we had was one, let's pull off a number of projects that staff are working on because we want this list to focus on a articulation of the strategic initiative that council is most focused on. What's also true about that, and, and, and that is a very appropriate decision. What's also true about that is all those other projects we took off didn't go away, right? And, 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 your, and your organization are working on those projects plus their own departmental initiatives and plus doing their day-to-day -day job. And so there's a truth in that there is only so much bandwidth to go around, right? And, and it's totally uh, appropriate to set the bar high. Um, but when you set the bar as high as we've set it, I think you have to recognize that everything will not be worked on simultaneously. Some things will be done sooner than others. And that is one, one of the focuses of having this discussion is I wanted to be extremely transparent with the city council before our first quarterly update on an assessment of where we are, what we can begin, what we're planning to begin later, and what I don't think in the organization cannot accomplish with the resources and, and uh, capacity constraints we have now. And that's the point of the matrix you received. That's the point of this conversation. This is not to be a detailed Here's the timeline for this project, and here's where we are. Now. All that can come later. This is sort of post adoption. Here's an assessment of what we're working on, what we are planning to begin later, and what is outside of the bandwidth. Um, and with regard to focus, um, I welcome a, a, another discussion like we had um, at COVID two years ago now at Skyline College, where we had. Uh, all of the, the department heads with the city council and a very open and candid conversation about the work that is on the department's work program, right? I, I think that discussion will elevate um, some of the, I would say, real, real frustration that council and the community has because the truth of the matter is there's a lot to be done in San Bruno uh, and there's a lot of improvements that we as a community want. I want as a city manager for the community and for the organization you want as elected. Our staff wants. There's the reality is there's only so much bandwidth, and so while we have a list and we're working on stuff, inevitably things aren't being done. And so um, I, I think the the best thing we can do to address the concerns that Councilmember Mason mentioned is to plan that that that, that in-person uh, retreat conversations where council can receive that detailed articulation. Uh, from the department heads on sort of what are their departmental initiatives? As a leader in their department, where are they spending their time to improve just the basic nuts and bolts, right? Um, where, are they, where are they spending their time on initiatives, both citywide initiatives uh, and the, the city council strategic initiatives? Uh, and I think that will elevate and, and provide that um, detailed understanding that, frankly, a conversation we haven't been able to have for the last two years. Yeah, and I think um, I enjoyed that meeting when we had it, and I would also like to hear um, what initiatives our uh, leadership team have that they are enjoying. Um, because, you know, it, it, it is overwhelming. I, you know, we hear um, 
very often about capacity and we I think we all understand that we're at capacity we have a lean staff that's why the council overwhelmingly approved a number of positions this year to not just get what has been outstanding done but also to get the initiatives that we narrowed down to eight if I remember correctly done um, and so I, I'd really like to hear from the directors and I'd love to hear what they're enjoying doing about their you know with their with the initiatives that they have it, is it just a feeling of we're getting work or is there any joy that's coming out of the work that's being done um, that is reflected in the city? I think it's important that we, we hear that from our directors as well. Thank you. Any other uh, questions from my colleagues? Vice Mayor? I apologize for not bringing it up earlier. Um, where are we in the status of the Measure K funding for Posey Park? Uh, I think that's best answered by Council Member Mason, who uh, has been having conversations with Supervisor Pine. Yeah, so they re he received the letter. We're just actually waiting on a response. Is there a, a due date, or is it kind of an open thing there? It's open. Okay. It's open. I can, I can follow up. I have to reach out about something else so I can follow up. Thank you. Okay, anything else from my colleagues in regards to the strategic initiative update, which obviously was just a kind of a pre-update to the update. Okay, I'm not just seeing One quick comment. I, I um, you know, the city manager mentioned about having a, uh, you know, try and schedule a, um, an in-person, um, uh, uh, retreat to go to go through this with the department. And I love that idea. I obviously wasn't here two years ago when the last one happened. That sounds great, and I would really like to participate in that. And you know, whatever we can do to get to make that happen um, sooner rather than later, I would be um, in favor of. Thank you. Okay. Uh, seeing no other um, hands up, and city manager, if if you're concluded. At this point, we'll move on to the discussion of potential downtown ad hoc committee. Just make sure we uh, watch the clock. Um, city manager, is there anything that you want to begin with before I uh, ask the vice mayor? No, uh, I believe the vice mayor has a PowerPoint. Um, he did provide a, a copy here, so if, Marty, if you have a challenge screen sharing, uh, I, I have it up here. And so uh, uh, the vice mayor, I'm going to turn it over to the vice mayor for, as you know, he had brought up this topic prior. And so that's why we're here this evening. And uh, he has some information for us about sort of, uh, more detail uh, thought process behind uh, what he was uh, discussing earlier. Uh, give, me, give, me, give me around 30 seconds to see if I can pull this. Uh, pull oh, I can keep talking. Here. All right. So I'm going <laughs> to try to get my. Um, presentation up and it's almost there and I'm ready to go if I can be screen uh, screen sharing capability I think I'm good to go yes vice mayor Medina you should have capability all panelists do okay I'm looking to share my screen I don't see the button on the left there should be a green button at the bottom of your screen that says share screen that um, enables you to then choose your pe presentation. If you unfortunately, have I don't see that. So perhaps we can just go ahead and go with staff copy. It's, it's close enough. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Well, I first wanted to thank uh, my colleagues for allowing this uh, to get this far. Um, as you all know, uh, our community has been interested in, in improving our downtown for many years. So next slide, please. So here is the presentation. We're going to go have a background, uh, some good news. Um, why we have why have a downtown improvement committee, who's on it, and what we're going to do. Next slide. Um, 
as you know, um, our downtown has been in its current state for a long time. We also know that our residents have been asking for improvement. Plans have been approved, but unfortunately funds are not available. Um, the parking structure as identified in the downtown parking management plan, 18 million in uh, 2019 dollars, right? So with inflation, you can do. Um, streetscape improvements are um, 19 million. You have also see that, you know, trees and pots don't do well for, for extended periods of time. So our, our downtown looks the way it is because it's just, it's, it's an old downtown. Next slide, please. So the good news, as we saw tonight, 20 of the 42 strategic initiatives are, are related to our downtown. This council wants to get something done. Um, the San Bruno Community Foundation, as Councilwoman Mason pointed out, in their poll, our residents, I think this is the, the second highest uh, uh, need from our residents that they want to see. And what have we done? Um, we have the strategic initiatives, um, and I'm gonna go through a couple of them here because these, these are the highlights. Um, hiring an economic development manager. We, we have 150,000 to create an accessible Centennial Plaza. We're looking at the funding for 300,000 to green and landscape our downtown. What else have we done? We've established loading and loading zones, uh, green parking zones to, to help turn over the customers that are coming downtown. Uh, Councilwoman Mason's working on a $200,000 grant for Posey Park. The council's behind that. We've authorized new garbage cans new, and news racks. And probably almost as important, our community is engaged in, in wanting to improve our downtown. They, they're there for cleanup. And, and they, they've taken upon themselves. I, I challenge anyone to say that those pots, they have never looked better ever since they've been installed downtown. Um, so that's the good news. Next slide, please. So with all this focus on, on downtown, well, why set up a committee? Well, as we see clearly, our staff is too busy to do anything more than they're, what they're already doing. So what can the council do by putting together a downtown improvement committee? Well, what we do immediately is, is, is that we, we're gonna improve the communication with our community, business community, with, with the business owners, property owners, with our residents. We're gonna build relationships. And, and, and in these relationships, you start developing trust that we, we are there for our downtown. And I know we're gonna get a question, I'll, I'll get a question, but about, well, what about the rest of our, our city? We're gonna get there too but we got to start somewhere. And I think it's time for us to start with the downtown improvement committee. We will also obtain input via surveys and community meetings to deal with the parking issues, to talk about the street closures, to what events can we do downtown? How do we assist businesses with these grant applications? I am very proud of the work that all of the council members have done in, in reaching out to all the businesses in San Bruno, but yet not everyone has applied. And we need to be able to, again, they need a little bit more handholding. And uh, it's a little hard to do that uh, socially distant, but it, it takes additional effort. And I, and I believe that we can do it. There are two business owners that I've been trying to get to, to apply and it's like, okay, tell you what, I'll sit down with you and we'll, we'll, we'll apply together because they haven't got any funding yet. Um, so as well as we can promote business, businesses, what else can we do? I don't think San Bruno has a, a visitor's guide. We don't have a presence on our, our downtown on social media. I believe uh, the chamber has some things, but 
in my opinion, the chamber needs our help too. There's only a few businesses, around 5% of them, that are in our downtown that are in the Chamber of Commerce. I confirmed there's at least 25 vacancies down there. So how can we help our community um, do a little bit more? And of course, as we come back, this, this subcommittee or committee, however we want to call it, however we want to vote for it, they will come back to council with recommendations for action. Next slide, please. So who's on it? Uh, well, like just like the Clean San Bruno Committee, we need two two council members. Um, I I really want to be on this, so we need one more if you're, if if we're going to do it. This takes a lot of time, and unfortunately, I have the time. I have a number of uh, connections downtown, and um, we need one more. Next slide, please. So what can we do as, as, as uh, who, who, this is the first phase and, and what would this co committee at some point enlarge into or to grow into with more, more involvement with the, with the full council, with the city manager and city department, with the chamber, the Bay Area Entrepreneur Center, the property owners, business owners, and, and I'm putting the, the next one separate because in the city of Burlingame, in their economic development uh, committee, they they meet once a once a year with the hotel operators to figure out how they can help them help the businesses downtown with with those guides that you get in a hotel, right? When you go there, you, what what's to do in San Bruno? They also meet with the car dealership. And we could expand to it's not just the downtown, but what are our other shopping centers? That's Tan Fran, that's Town Center, that's Bay Hill, and the businesses on El Camino. And of course, probably our most important partners are our community. Without without the consumer, it goes nowhere. Next slide, please. There's an example of an amazing uh, effort from, from a, a community member. That's one of our pot. Never look better. Open to questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Vice Mayor, for uh, the PowerPoint and your comments. I'm going to uh, first see if there's any members of the public that would like to have any comments on this, this would be the opportunity to uh, raise your hand. Now I'm gonna move back to the council for questions to the vice mayor uh, on, on, Claire, on the PowerPoint and his comments. All right, seeing no hands, we'll bring it uh, back to council and any questions to the vice mayor. Somebody's hand just went up, Mayor Medina. I'm not sure who else. Is there any immediate questions? I'm gonna give an opportunity for the public to raise hands. Any member of the council have any questions? Mr. Chair? Oh, council Member Salazar. So, um, you know, first of all, I wanna, I wanna commend the vice mayor for bringing this forward. I, I know that um, after years of, of trying to get efforts started downtown and always sort of coming up short. I, I think this is um, an innovative approach, definitely something uh, different. Um, I don't think we've ever tried uh, forming a, a committee. I, I know that we've tried uh, some efforts to form um, Merchants Association years ago and it didn't go so well, but uh, you know, that, that's really not a good reason to never try again. Um, so my, um, given um, what we heard previously uh, regarding workloads and, and number of initiatives going on, uh, it does seem like this effort would require 
some involvement from staff. And so I kind of wanted to hear from the city manager regarding um, his thoughts on how, how um, city staff would participate, sorry about that, uh, how city staff would participate and what uh, amount of effort it would take to make this successful. City manager. Sure. Uh, uh, in response to Councilmember uh, Salazar's question, uh, receive the receive the PowerPoint today. Uh, receiving um, sort of the full complement uh, of the articulation uh, with Council uh, right now as well. So I'm uh, I don't know that I have the most articulated uh, answer, uh, but I why don't I make a, a few overarching thoughts. I think the, in large measure, the concept that the vice mayor is articulating on some level sounds like a robust chamber of commerce with maybe greater membership uh, or that merchants association. Um, and so do we want to create a seat on the, or, or talk, work with the chamber on having a seat on the chamber uh, for a member of the city council. Um, and because a lot of the sort of strategies uh, there to work with businesses and improve um, assistance and collaboration, I think relates to the work that the chamber does. Um, with, with regard to staff's ability to support the effort. Uh, what I would say is right now, sort of as we sit today, uh, outside of sort of carving out a portion of my time as a city manager, I don't know that we have a staff member that we can assign to that effort. Um, we are hiring a economic development manager. Um, so, so we could potentially look at that, um, but the full complement of what that person has been, uh, will be working on, we'd have to sort of look at that at that workload. I do think that there is a overall desire, not just from council member Medina, but members of council to engage with our merchants in downtown. Right. What I, as I look at our existing work plan over the next six months, there's a lot of things that are, that are going to require a lot of engagement. One of it, one of them is cannabis. Um, uh, you know, does the council want to have a subcommittee that meets with businesses downtown around cannabis. Is that a, and, and the, the sort of zoning conversations and how many businesses we, we have downtown? Sort of, is it centered on council policy or is it centered on other things that are maybe more aligned to a chamber or emergency association? And so that's where I'm trying to understand this, the sort of demarcation. Because if it's centered on council policy, that could be an ad hoc committee or that could be a, a limited duration outreach effort. If it's centered on other items, those items are typically more focused on a chamber or a merchants association. And so sort of what is the sort of core focus um, of, of, of the effort and, and, and the end goal? Because if it's to report to the city council for potential actions, I think a lot of the, the items there um, don't all, don't necessarily align to that. So my recommendation would be to make it very focused um, and or um, think about structuring it as a partnership with other organizations that are focused on the business community and the merchant community. Uh, and then I guess the last thought uh, was also that should the city council go to district elections, you will have a district council member in that area to focus. And so how would that be if it's, um, that could be the focus of that district council member to meet with, with the merchants in downtown and, and do those sorts of activities. If you decide to have a committee, uh, maybe it's the district council member and the mayor because that's the sort of overarching, um, you, have a, you have that district council member and the mayor that serve the entire city. So are those two, two people on the committee? Just some overarching thoughts as I sort of Receive this with council. Um, 
Thank you, um, Councilmember Hamilton. I'm going to call uh, first. We have a member of the public, uh, Nancy Foreman, and uh, I see the only hand up at this time. So uh, if I can switch back to uh, Ms. Foreman, I hear from her, and then we'll bring it back to Council. I'll go to you, Mr. City Clerk, if you can bring in um, Nancy. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hi. Um, thanks for taking my call. I was trying to raise my hand and it was flipping in and out. Um, to what Council Member Medina is saying, and from having been downtown in the last eight months, talking to a lot of merchants, talking to community people, I'm really passionate about having our merchants be heard. They're tired of hearing a runaround. We keep hearing you're going to do something. I hear that Council Member Medina is offering to reach out and let these merchants know that they're being heard. We desperately need to come up with a win-win situation and our merchants feel like they're being paid attention to. There's so many simple five minute projects that can be done downtown that just show volumes of care. Our merchants are fed up. And I really feel like over the last eight months, I've gained a lot of trust with them. They thank me, they say downtown's never looked so good. What is the city doing? We don't see anything. And I'm not a council person, so I don't have to be real polite. My voice is cracking because I'm passionate about it. And please, let's do something for our merchants so that we know that San Bruno cares. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. And now we'll move to Council Member Hamilton, please. So um, I wanted to, uh, this, this kind of follows on from um, Council Member Salazar's question and the city manager's answer to it regarding um, staff time and availability. I would, um, what I would, what I took away from the, from what we, what we heard from the vice mayor, and please Marty, correct me if I'm, if I'm mistaken, is that the, the focus of this would be to, to do what we can as council members on this committee without involving staff um, you know, as much as possible. And if there were things that would eventually need to involve staff, that's where we talk about on that, that last bullet re about re providing recommendations to council for action, because you know, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be directing staff to do anything directly from this committee. It would have to come from the full council. So um, as far as going through and doing these individual um, uh, items that the vice mayor laid out, I was envisioning that this would be, that this, that these would be things that would be done specifically by the members of the committee and not asking staff to do any of them. Um, because we, because as, as we all know, staff, staff doesn't have capacity to do one more thing. So, um, it, it, it's, 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 it's to be a, it's to extend our reach and, and pitch in and help not to um, add another burden. It, uh, it, Marty, if I'm mis if I misinterpreted that, let me please please correct me. No, you're 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 exactly on point, uh, Councilman Hamilton. Um, at some point, of course, to be fully effective, you would need staff support, but that is not what I'm asking for right now. There's plenty to do with building uh, a relationship with our downtown community. Um, I they don't know who we are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even still today, you can walk into a store and you run to somebody and you're like, yeah, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm so-and-so. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> Didn't know you. Like, that's okay, you know? I, don't wear my badge around town. I think it would be important, my, my other point that I wanted to make, I think it would be important that it also is not just a guerrilla effort that's being done without any communication i think we i think it would be important to keep um to keep staff through through communicating directly to through the city manager's office of what this committee is doing just so that we don't 
step on each step on toes or or you know cause any conflicts or whatever just you know full transparency about what's happening um, but as far as the actual boots on the ground effort it would be from the council members to start with the, the intent councilman hamilton the intent would be almost exactly how you and i work together on the clean san bruno uh committee we would have zoom meetings until we could meet safely really safely in person those meetings will be recorded, uh, available to our staff. Um, we have bi-weekly updates with our city manager and uh, we're happy to share everything that we're working on, open to suggestions. Um, this, this is gonna be a truly transparent process. Um, there are five businesses that I identified that are in the chamber currently downtown. That's that's in the in the less than five percent. So we can assist our chamber. As we all know, there's been a, a number of changes in the chamber, and and they were making great progress, and then got hit by COVID, just like everybody else. And all those efforts went away, and now we have somebody new. So um, yeah. I, it, this this won't take much staff time. Very 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 little, other than giving an update. And when any time is needed, then I understand the process. We come back, report back out to the council, and ask for action. But um, this is primarily at, at at this point is obtaining the input and and building those relationships, getting those grant applications out again. We, we, we gave one, the whole council gave one to everyone, every business owner in San Bruno, just about, and yet not everybody applied. And this next round of funding is specifically for those that haven't received that funding. So, um, yes, thank you for your question. Councilor Mason. Yeah, so I just want to thank um, Vice Mayor Medina for bringing this to us. Um, Vice Mayor Medina has been a huge champion for downtown, I think, for as long as I've known him. I um, I am wondering, I, I like the idea of, a, of an improvement committee. I think uh, my concern is that between um, the downtown being listed as you know top priority at the, with the community foundation the city identifying it as a you know top one of the top priorities as well through our initiatives um and then i'm not sure if everybody knows but um, i reached out to the san mateo county silicon valley tourist association who wrote a, a great article about san bruno entitled unique places to visit in the bay area san bruno and it is actually the number one clicked blog that they have right now on their site, um, followed by the examiner's August 9th um, article, neighborhood shops thrive in San Bruno's eclectic downtown, how long will it last? So there's definitely attention being placed on our, you know, I think very quaint and beautiful downtown and trying to figure out how we can enhance what we have is really i think the priority right now so my suggestion would be that in lieu of having kind of this broad committee that brings back recommendations that i think honestly are going to be largely what are already recommended um to take what's already been um, advised like for example take the streetscape plan and use and use the committee to gather the merchants and say within the streetscape plan which would be your priorities today um, I would also say that the committee members selected should be assigned to attend the chamber meetings. Um, one of our neighboring cities, when I started calling around to find out what chambers are doing there, actually has two council members attend every chamber meeting. And it was uh, established years ago to make sure that the chamber is aware that the city council is there to assist them, to support them, and also have a chamber that um, that is advocating for their merchants in the ways that most benefit the merchants, right? And I know our, our chamber has struggled, um, but hopefully they'll come out of this, um, you know, the COVID like all the other, like everybody else, you know, everybody's struggling right now. So really my, my two suggestions would be 
to really narrow this down to saying we have a streetscape plan, sharing it with the merchants. I've had meetings with the merchants and I can honestly say that I think a lot of merchants are not familiar with the streetscape plan. So I think that would be the first part. And then within the streetscape plan, what do the merchants want to see um, as priorities? And then the second part would be the same committee would, it, would be responsible to attending the Chamber of Commerce meetings and then I would say, let's see how that comes out. And then maybe that could be expanded um, to another project. But I think that way we're, we're really starting to lean in on what are going to be our priorities and, you know, our checklist to start really fixing and seeing a visible improvement in downtown. But thank you for bringing this to us. Once again, as I started, uh, thank you for your time and effort. And uh, we've taken our walks. And so... Uh... I, and watched you water and other things. So uh, the passion is obviously there. Um, so thank you, Marty. Um, Vice Mayor, um, I know you had mentioned also there's, a, I believe, if I heard correctly, like 20 of the 42 initiatives have something to do with downtown in some respect. So what I certainly don't want to do is duplicate and have too many of us going over things. So, you know, some folks may not know that uh, the council has taken some of the streetscapes and said, okay, let's do newspaper racks, let's do uh, trash receptacles. Maybe they don't know about Centennial Plaza. So it's probably an educational aspect that I think is a reach out and let them know. I think Councilmember Mason about the streetscape uh, plan is kind of good to, to see that. And of course, it takes money. Um, community benefits will come in at some points. And so maybe there's some opportunities. With the chamber, there's always been a um, department head that has sat on the board of directors, um, and that that occurs and still does today, so that the city is connected uh, closely with the the board. So they have the board of directors, which are elected by their peers, um, and then I don't know if they have general meetings, but um, I think that's something that has to be worked out. I don't know that we can walk in and impose uh, us putting people there. It's about the collaboration of what works well um, for that system, um, if, if they'd like that. Um, but I think, you know, communicating is everything, but I think setting expectations are as well. And I think some of the things can be done that has been proven. And I mean, there are some things about just the sidewalks. There are some basic things as uh, Ms. Foreman had said, Mrs. Foreman had said about, you know, that we could probably do or or or, or, or low hanging fruit that you can take care of. but um i do believe that eventually you know staff is going to find themselves in a situation that it's going to be okay uh let's look into this how can we do this what's the timeline is it uh whose property is it on for example caltrain or, or caltran um so i just want us to be mindful of that um and so but once again i, I very much and, and thank you uh, Vice Mayor for putting together that presentation you did. I think that helped to, as we talked earlier, to expound upon where you were uh, seeing this vision. So I, I thank you for that. <clears throat> Councilor Mason. Yeah, and I, I would also add that one of the initiatives we talked about was, um, and I don't think it was written out the way I had kind of introduced it, but with the idea that we would find out what businesses we want to see in downtown and, um, and then determining once, you know, once we had an economic and development manager, we would, you know, they would essentially try to attract those businesses and hopefully we would have some funds to put up an incentive. And so that would be another area that I would also suggest um, maybe speaking with the merchants or the owners, you know, what's missing down here? One of the big responses I get is there's a lot of restaurants, but there's nothing to do after you eat. Um, there's no, you know, arcades for kids. There's no um, boutique shops or shops at all. Um, outside of, you know, twice as nice, lovely bump. Um, so I guess what would the merchants want to see that complement their existing business without necessarily being strong competition? Um, and and that, that would be something else that I think would be really helpful to get more information on and knowledge because I, I don't really know more than, you know, com random conversations with store owners. So thank you. And thank you for those comments because you just – uh, triggered my mind to one thing I forgot I had in my note here didn't is just the when businesses you know when you have a business on um, in, in our community that come in that aren't a chain or something sometimes they need that extra assistance right um, there are businesses that go in there and and you know I don't want to say holding hands in a, in a negative way but I mean sometimes you need a little 
extra assistance about the requirements about what needs to be done. Here's the list. Uh, this this will have the best success for both sides. And I think that's in, important. It may not be for this committee, but you know, I, I look to ways, how can we streamline the process? I do hear that folks want to come in, but this isn't allowed downtown, or this is not allowed. And I, I'm not, you know, I, I need to understand that a little bit better. Um, but obviously we all as colleagues have heard times someone saying, hey, you know, I, I need more assistance or this is taking long. And of course that's money. Um, also the other side of it is when a business sits vacant for years and years and nothing happens inside of it. And you know, what can the city do, do if anything, rather than allow it to stay vacant because maybe that that business owner is saying, I'm okay with just it sitting as a vacant storefront. So I think those are two other uh, matters too. Um, sorry to go off on, on that off, off, off side of that. But anyway, I'm gonna turn it back to the vice mayor. Yes, um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you all for your questions. Um, so um, in, in, in one of those slides, the survey, um, surveying our businesses on, on what they what they would like to see, what our community would like to see. That's one of the things. Picking out items out of the streetscape, um, that could be one of the things. It's, it's pretty easy, easy to pivot on that. The, the, the primary thing, though, is, is that we need to get, we need to communicate. Uh, when we are proposing a, uh, a green a parking zone, and we need to be able to make sure that our businesses understand what's going on and, and making sure that they're involved and um, perhaps they're not as involved as they would, um, as they, as we, we all would like them to be. Um, they're really, really busy. They're, they're struggling keeping um, their businesses open. And um, I, I think this is, this is the right time to start these conversations. It's not going to take staff much time at all. And let's say uh, in three months, report back uh, what we found out so far with these different surveys, with these different meetings. Um, our city manager will be updated every other week, probably even more often um, if, if he would like. But um, there are 20, 23 vacancies downtown, right? What can we do to help? help uh, help get the word out on on social media letting people know hey at, at uh, hold on a second at 675 there's a vacancy it's this many square feet it's it's here's a picture of it it was previously a restaurant it's ready to go and and sharing that information with our community doing more than we're doing now which isn't too much outside of what what our staff is already working on. I'm not trying to duplicate any of that effort. I can't. This is this is about reaching out to our community and building these relationships with the additional support, knowing that we're on an improvement committee, and we're going to invite everybody. We'll, we can we'll invite everybody. Figure out if we can if we need to do it block by block. We could do it like that um, because it's hard when you're, when you own a business and if you come up downtown, you'll see the majority of them need help, right? They need staff. This, this COVID has wiped out a lot of people that are not interested in returning to these jobs and the, the help wanted signs are, are up there. And it's very difficult to get people to kind of want to come back to take those jobs. People figured out they can do something else. So anyhow, um, I thank you all for your for your time. Um, I, um, I'm open to work with anyone, I, but I think it's, it's really time for us to move forward. And I'm, and I'm hoping for the support to start this committee and to reach into our community and hit the, hit the ground running. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Vice Mayor, and to be mindful of time. What I think would need to be d done too is ad hoc versus just two council members, you know, talks about noticing and talks about the process. So I want to be mindful of that. The city manager articulated that 
you know, he again is, is receiving this. So I want him to have a little uh, time to digest that with you maybe, and, you know, come up. I'm going to, unless I'm seeing, unless I'm not reading uh, the uh, colleagues well, that uh, to put, to bring this back up at a regular scheduled council meeting because we have to, we can't appoint committees here. They need to be done, um, as we know, especially depending on what type of committee it's going to be. Um, so it's established uh, the, the, the process and protocol. Mr. So, Mayor, can we get the city attorney? It's, I have a little different understanding. This is a scheduled meeting to discuss appointing members to this committee. That was the whole point. Guess who appeared? Uh, there he is. <laughs> so um, I'm looking at the agenda. It says discussion of potential downtown ad hoc committee. Um, it doesn't say appoint members to the ad hoc committee. It, it says there's going to be a discussion about it. Uh, I don't know what was intended that, that this would be, but when I read it, I thought it was a discussion of the potential committee and not whether members were going to be appointed at this time. But I, I think out of an abundance of caution, I would suggest that if there is agreement or majority or consensus, that it could simply be agendized at the next meeting for appointment of the um, individuals to be on that committee. Through the mayor, I might suggest that, uh, you know, the, uh, well, I want to get going, get, get us going on this as soon as possible as well. I think we, not knowing exactly what type of committee it is, um, we, that needs to be well defined before we would vote on it, I believe. Yeah, I, I would add that since this is the first time that several of us are hearing about this, it would be helpful to make sure that we determine what sort of committee is it going to be, what are the rules associated, is it ad hoc or, or otherwise. So I think there's a little bit of uh, vetting that staff would need to do just to make sure that we've got all the details uh, clearly detailed uh, before the, the committee is appointed and formed. Oh, is that, uh, okay, so Sorry. I'm hearing a concurrence of bringing it forward. Um, give staff the, the the opportunity to do that and, and make suggestions that you talk to the vice mayor as far as just so everybody's on the, the same page of what kind of committee that would be most effective to do, right? Because uh, you want to have a lot of latitude, I think, and be able to meet and greet and if you have to start posting things and all that. So I think you want the most efficient way to communicate the best way. Um, so is uh, city attorney, we can do that at the next meeting? Sure. Uh, obviously we, we will need to figure out what kind of committee it is. Normally, uh, committees, even of less than a quorum, that are established by formal action of the city council are required to comply with the Brown Act, even if they don't include members of the public. So there's just some things we, we need to discuss and work through and make sure that everybody's on the same page. Understood. Okay, better to be always safe than sorry. I think we've all learned that uh, in our lifetimes. Um, okay, with that, um, I want to thank again, Vice Mayor, and I want to thank everybody for your input and, and thoughts. We're going to go ahead and adjourn in just a couple minutes. We'll be going uh, to the uh, next Zoom meeting, uh, which will be 7 o'clock, uh, City Council meeting.